You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode 662. We're excited for the show today. have a, a special guest, Paul. We do have a special guest, and before we get to that guest, why don't we get to today's question, because our guest today will be providing deep expert knowledge on the insurance industry and giving you tips and tricks on how you can save money. Let's go ahead and hear that question. Hey guys, this is JP out in Charlotte, North Carolina. Just want to thank you guys for all you guys have been doing out there in New Mexico. Uh, really appreciate the content you guys are putting out there. Uh, I've only been listening to you guys for probably about three weeks, but uh, you're hilarious and really informative. So really appreciate what you're giving the community um, as far as your time and all the help you're giving us. So listen, got a question for you. Just bought a Phantom and uh, it's coming in the mail on Wednesday. I'm going to spin up an LLC as well. And curious about drone insurance. How does that work? And do I need to have it? Thanks a lot, guys. Looking forward to hearing from you. How does drone insurance work? And uh, do I need to I love have the way it? he asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> How does it work? And do I need it? But before we get into answering the question, and we'll go a lot deeper than what he asked. Um, let's introduce our guest. Definitely. Today we have the the pleasure of having Mr. Joel, and I'm probably going to say Joe, I'm probably going to say his name wrong, I already did, Joe Ernster from, from the Bullock Insurance Agency, who actually has set up a custom portal for DroneU members to get insurance. Joe, welcome to the show. Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Doing well. As you know, many difficulties or technical difficulties later, here we are. So we're happy to finally be live with you. How's your day going? Oh, it's going fantastic. How about yours? Awesome, awesome. So a lot of people are wondering, is insurance necessary? <laughs> are they? they? Well, at least three people are wondering if yes. insurance is necessary. Wait, before we do that, though, I think maybe you should just briefly introduce yourself, what your experience is, what your background is, and just talk a little bit about that. Definitely, definitely. My name is uh, Joe Ernster. I work for Bullock Agency Incorporated. We're an aviation insurance brokerage uh, based out of Illinois, about 45 miles west of Chicago. Uh, we started business in the 80s, um, you know, only insured manned aircraft until 2015. I started targeting the uh, commercial UAS industry uh, with the advent of the 333 exemption. And since then, it's just exploded. Um, I insure about 200 commercial UAS operations to date. That is awesome. That is very awesome. So can you give us some information as far as how, what are some ways that people can save money on their UAS insurance? And can you also give us some information? Because I know there are caveats to insurance, like insuring one primary bird over another and how the price can increase if you insure your whole fleet when maybe you're only using one bird. Yes, yes. If you're looking to save money, it would be you know best to get liability only because that's the most important part of UAS insurance. You know, a prosumer level UAV will cost you you know around a thousand dollars, which is a lot of money. But you know, as far as liability is concerned, damage you could cause to somebody else is you know much more extensive than just a thousand dollars. So you know, insuring one UAV is a good idea. And then if you do have a backup, if your primary UAV goes down. You would then just call your aviation insurance broker and ask them to, you know, swap out for the uh, for the backup. And then it's, you know, just a matter of an endorsement from the insurance company. And, uh, you know, it's nice and easy to do that. And that'll allow you to save a little bit of money on the premium. Now, are there any other tips or tricks that people could use if they were trying to save money on their insurance? So obviously, if we eliminate whole insurance, and for those of you who don't know, whole insurance is essentially the cost to replace your vehicle in case anything is damaged by your vehicle. What does it normally cost, Joe, to get whole insurance on, let's say, a standard policy for a Phantom 4 Pro, that $1,000 kind of price range you're talking about? You would expect to pay approximately 10% of the insured value of your aircraft in premium. Uh, so if you have a thousand dollar Phantom 4 Pro, uh, you know you would expect to pay about a hundred dollars per year. 
However, uh, if you're using it for less risky operations, such as agriculture, where you're just out in the middle of a field doing NDVI imaging or something like that, um, you would it would be a little bit lower of a rate. So, you know, the less of a risk you are, the better rate the insurance company will give. So that's a good tip right there, Rob. It's yeah. like if we are kind of discussing our operations with you, that that can help save us some money. Do you have any other tips and tricks for us? For saving money, it's always good to find a good aviation insurance broker, you know, because we get paid on commission. So some of them, you know, will be less than honest and try to, uh, you know, put you with a more expensive insurance company so they can get more commission. So So, find somebody who's for us. One of the things that um, I think is unclear to folks is how much does experience help? So if you've got somebody that's been flying for five years and they can prove experience somehow, be it experience with drone you or some other form of experience is there a way for that to reduce insurance premiums at this point in some ways yes so you know if you're operating you know if you're doing more of a unique use with the uav or something like that the insurance company will definitely ask about your experience and that will contribute to a lower rate however if you're using you know just for standard operations like uh, real estate or something, they may not even factor that in. But a lot of times uh, an actual person will look at these aviation insurance submissions, an underwriter who is also a pilot, and they will, you know, review your credentials. And especially if you're operating something larger, you know, maybe a UAS over 55 pounds, they will definitely take, uh, you know, any sort of experience you have into consideration. That's that's gotcha. good information. Yeah, I mean, training is definitely helpful in experience as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know from other insurance agencies that if we get over a certain number of hours, our risk potential actually goes down significantly. Absolutely. So one other question I have for you, Joe, is what type of policies are you selling the most? I know some guys are saying, well, there's a $2 million CSL, there's a $1 million CSL, there's a $5 million CSL. I've only seen a need for a $5 million CSL for working for companies such like HBO and Sony and some of the bigger motion picture studios. What are you seeing as, a, you know, what would you see as, I guess, the average? Definitely, definitely. The industry standard right now is $1 million. Um, so that will cover you for 95% of the jobs you're going to be asked to do. Um, however, you know, $5 million, like you mentioned, for companies like HBO, maybe Universal Studios or MGM, or a larger construction firm. Um, I did run into one recently that required $50 million in aircraft liability, Whoa. which I thought was a little bit excessive for uh, UAV operations. But, uh, you know, their insurance requirements come from, you know, their parent company, and it, it is what it is. So, so that, was, uh, that was for a Mavic Pro, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was for Inspire, actually. Okay. Inspire, and I actually got the insurance folks on the uh, from the construction company on the phone, and they said, it is what it is. You have to comply with the aircraft uh, liability requirement. So basically they said, we really like our little box, and you can come in here with us, but we're not going to go out there with you. Exactly. Right. You have to play by their rules. <laughs> yeah. Everyone likes Love playing that. other sandboxes. You know, one question I have, and I think a question that we've been seeing in the community is, if I get a standard UAV insurance policy, is that going to cover me if my UAV is stolen? Mm, good question. If you purchase hull coverage, it's written on what's called an all-risk hull basis. So if it's stolen, if it flies away... Uh, you know, if you crash it into a tree, if you fly through somebody's window and land it on their grand piano, uh, it's covered. It's, um, I've had a few claims this year where the UAV was unrecoverable, and, you know, the insurance company still paid out. So one was lost on the top of a redwood tree in California, and the other was uh, dipped in a lake in Wisconsin. I know about dipping them into lakes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. We have it on video. <laughs> yeah, we sure do. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I asked that question because someone, I guess, had one of their drones stolen out of their vehicle, and this particular agent was saying, no, 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 that's covered by your homeowners or your renters, but you're saying if you get whole, it's covered. Yeah, with, with a reputable UAV insurance company, uh, if you go through me, I would be, I would make 100% sure that is the case. And I've actually had, since 2015, two of them stolen. One, uh, you know, an armed robbery actually in Peru, and the other one, somebody broke into their car and took it out of there. So 
uh, you know, and they're both covered. You just need to make sure you're with reputable companies and honest brokers. So if we wanted to figure out what insurance would cost through you, where would we go? We would go to www.bullockagency.com. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of information on there. Uh, you know, somebody could contact you guys and uh, they could put you in contact with me. Um or you can give me a call. So that portal that we set up with you, what is the web address for that? The web address for that, I'm not too sure right now. Um, I well, apologize for that. You, well, don't apologize because we don't exactly have it right in front of us either. But we will, <laughs> for all of you listeners, we'll have that in the show notes. And and that is a portal. So that down there. <laughs> yeah, check it out in the show notes. It's bullockdroneu.arrowinsure.com forward slash DTM forward slash US forward slash UAS forward slash home. But we will have that link for you in the notes, which is specific for Drone U members. Or if you're a listener for the show, uh, this really helps them uh, kind of understand where you're coming from. And look, I'm right here. Applicant details. This is all online. And I'll say, Joe, one thing that I like about this is you know, I've applied for insurance from uh, direct from Global Aero. I've applied from, uh, I'm trying to remember what Terry Miller's company is, but it doesn't matter. And some of these applications are extensive. They're long. You've got to talk with people on the phone. And I'm a millennial, and I don't like talking to people, you know? And I like getting <laughs> things done online because I can do it a whole lot faster. I mean, sometimes I go to DMV, and I'm just like, let me sit on that keyboard for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, when there's a sloth on the other end, yeah. it makes it a little frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> you well, <-L>, yeah. <laughs> so, as we talk about the portal, which of course has been set up with Global Aerospace, what? How many other? And I don't know if you want to go into the other carriers that are out there that you guys work with. What kind of options are there when somebody goes to you? Um, there are. Uh, since I'm a broker, I work with all the aviation insurance companies out there. Um, there's a handful of other ones that do UAS insurance. However, you know. 95% of the time, Global Aerospace is, you know, the go-to company for this stuff. They're really positioning themselves to do a really good job in this space, and they set up that portal specifically for, you know, to target UAS operations, and they know, you know, a lot of UAS operators are younger guys who do not want to, you know, speak to somebody or anything, uh, so they set up the portal, exactly. They set up the portal, and then if you do have any questions, you can still feel free to call or email me. I'm always around. I love this stuff, and you know, I'm just always willing to talk about it. So <laughs> You do kind of light up talking about insurance. Yeah, he's, it's, like, <laughs> he's glowing. He's glowing. It's, weird, it's, it's like a new mama. About, I like it. I like it. <laughs> So one, one question I have for you is, are you insuring a lot of groups, say like a construction agency who's flying their own drones, are you insuring them? And do you do any like fleet insurance? So where you can get, say like five drones covered for multiple pilots. Uh, that's something I've been, I've been really wondering about because we're actually quoting a couple consulting jobs right now. And this, uh, this would be good information. Oh yeah, most most construction firms uh, contract out their uh, UAS operations to you know other businesses. Um, however, with Global Aerospace, you uh, you know you'll get you'll pay less per unit uh, the more UAVs you have, and then also you get what's called an open pilot warranty. So you don't have named particular pilots on the policy. It's any pilot properly certificated, uh, you know, for the flight involved. But as long as your pilots are 107, you know, to have their RPAC, uh, you know, they're good to fly under the policy, even if they are, you know, just maybe under uh, the supervision of an, uh, you know, a RPIC. So, uh, you know, they're real broad policies. They're fantastic. And that, that helps me sleep at night. I don't have to worry about following up with my insurance, you know, seeing if they're following the policy to a T because they are so broad. That's awesome. What? What would something like that cost? I mean, just I mean, I know it varies from company to company, but you know, I guess that would be my first question. My second question is for the average small business owner, the single pilot owner who's only got one drone. What are they? What are they looking at for a policy? Prices have really, really come down. Um, so for a million dollars, a single UAV, just liability only, I could say you know six fifty. In that neighborhood, as long as you're not doing, you know, a lot of indoor use, they don't really like indoor use right now in a lot of uh, events. So if you're doing the standard stuff, a single operator, million dollars around six. 
Gotcha. Now, what if we wanted to add whole insurance onto that? We look, and you said 10%, so is that mm-hmm. 60 bucks? Or is, you're the math yeah. guy. Well, it would be it'd be 10% of the value of what you're insuring, right? So if it's a uh, P4 Pro, 1500 bucks, 150 bucks, so whatever it is. 150, so mm-hmm. we're at seven, 800 bucks. And now, 800 bucks if you want to insure the hull for the P4 and a million dollars in liability. And now you know, Joe, why we call him the bean counter. <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, Joe. So, so here are the, some of the tough questions, and I'm asking these because these are the questions we get, and we want to make okay. sure that people are informed. So, okay. please bear with me. We're going deep. We're g- <laughs> right, we so a couple of the questions that we get are, and I want to give you an opportunity to respond to them. How often do you shave? <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly every morning. Good job. Um, <laughs> not me. Anyways, something like Verify. The reality is, it's a competitor. Um, I'm sure you're very aware of it, how it works. What are your thoughts on it? The floor is yours. <laughs> okay. First, the funny thing is that uh, Verify's policies are actually underwritten by Global Aerospace. Ah. So that's, that's funny to consider. Um, but the second thing is, you know, it definitely has its place, and I don't like to badmouth the competition. However, you know, you run into problems with certificates of insurance. Um, so... If you need a certificate of insurance to get the job, but you don't buy the insurance until after you get to the location, how are you going to do that? Um, mm-hmm. Also, if, you know, they can allegedly give you certificates of insurance, but if the company that is hiring you needs uh, additional language, such as you know waiver of subrogation or uh, you know primary, not contributory, um, you know things like that. Uh, it may be difficult to get with Verify. And furthermore, I've also uh, actually run into a company recently who specifically said that they do not accept Verify. Hmm. You know, it has its place, but I do see its limitations. But the most important thing is you get me with an annual <laughs> you know, So if you did have a company, would you rather, you know, want to call a 1-800 number in Silicon Valley or would you rather call it you know, yeah. This goes back to the whole millennial thing, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I don't like to call 1-800s, but he's got a great point about the certificates of insurance, yeah. which is why I've never used Verify. But another thing that, uh, just to back up Joe here, because I think Verify does work for the, you know, random guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. They also are assuming that you are a legal pilot. And if you're not, you're you're paying for insurance that won't cover you. Yeah. But on top of that, you've got to have cell phone service to even get Verify. And there are a lot of places where I fly where I don't have cell phone service. So I think that's another caveat that would be a good ammunition for you, Joe. But those uh, the, the waiver of subrogation is actually really important. I was shooting a TV show out in Rio Rancho, and they needed that in the uh, certificate of insurance, and they mm-hmm. needed to be named specifically in the certificate of insurance. So that's a really good point because Verify has been marketing the fact that they can do certificates in advance, but that is good information. It's this deep-level stuff, guys. It's this really important information that is going to really separate the fact of whether you're covered or whether you're not. So mm-hmm. what other questions do we have here, Rob? Well, one that comes to mind kind of along the same lines while we're in this uh, this paradigm of competition, one one of the things that we hear is that just go to like, go to your company that you get your home insurance from, like State Farm. What are the, what are the risks there? Or is, is that a good option? Yeah, I, uh, I recently wrote an article for a magazine called Rotor Drone, um, and I addressed this exact point. Uh, most Traditional insurance brokers, you know, the, their policies will exclude anything related to aircraft. So, uh, you know, you won't really have coverage for it. Um, and then also some people will get an inland marine policy, it's called, mm-hmm. and that'll cover it for, you know, maybe theft or while you're driving it, you know, and it gets destroyed. But if you're flying the aircraft, there won't really be any liability or maybe even hull coverage on that type of thing. So it's important to go to somebody an aviation-specific insurance broker to make sure you're properly covered. And this isn't, you know, I'm not speaking to every single insurance policy out there, but generally. Just know your policy, know what's excluded, know what's there. Um, You know, but most of the time, if you want to insure something related to aviation, you go to an aviation Yeah, so I guess what I'd say, if if somebody insists on, on going to, you know, their home insurance provider, ask the right questions and make them show it to you in the policy. I mean, literally point it out and say, here it is, because most likely they won't be able to do that. 
Mm, um, exactly. But but at least go through that process of asking the right questions to, to ensure you're getting the insurance that you think you're getting. I mean, that's what this is about. Um, and I, for one, have always used brokers for all of my insurance um, because I like the fact that there are different options and, and we have different needs. And as, as we grow in our family or, or in our business or whatever, insurance needs change. And I think brokers do a really good job of being able to be more flexible and adaptable to what your situation is. Definitely. We're, you know, we're in the, we're in the trenches every day with this stuff. I look at this stuff every day, you know, the general, a usual, a, a layman, you know, as we could call them, wouldn't, uh, you know, isn't that well versed on insurance, doesn't care that much. This stuff isn't that interesting, you know, so, um, so it's, it's always good to have the guidance of a broker. That is definitely true. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, something else that, that I'm curious about is, is there anything coming down the pike, so to speak, with drone-related insurance, things that the industry is working on improving or, you know, besides the obvious, we'd love if prices went down. That's always going to be there, but um, I don't know. I'm not even sure what specifically to ask, but is there anything that you're reading in, in the journals that you read each night? Everything it, it just changes so rapidly, so rapidly that, you know, nobody can tell, you know, what's going to be. You know, I didn't even I wasn't even aware of global aerospace's portal until, you know, earlier this year, right when they launched it. You mm-hmm. know, so it's, everything changes so rapidly. You never know. But the main thing to keep in mind is that aviation insurance is very negotiable. So if there's mm-hmm. something that, you know, I didn't specifically address in any coverage that you would like to do with the UAV. You know, that's something we can speak with the underwriters about and, uh, you know, see if they can get that done. Uh, I insure a, a drone light show in Michigan, um, and prior to me getting together with Global Aerospace, they didn't have any coverage for this. So mm-hmm. we specifically mm-hmm. negotiated, you know, a drone light show policy for him. Um, you know, also there was a guy out in Massachusetts who flew UAVs underground to 3D map sewers for the water department. Um, and he said, you know, would this be covered? And I said, you know, I really don't know. Let me contact the insurance company, see how they feel about it. And they, you know, we That's put something time. together for them to get them insured. So, you know, so just, just be, don't hide anything from your broker. Just let them know exactly what you're doing and see if they can get it done for you. Good advice. I think that is good advice. Is there any other tips and tricks for, for pilots who are deeply interested in saving money anything else that just comes off the top of your mind if you want to save some money just uh you know stay try to stay claims free as much as possible even though you know these aviation insurance companies are uh used to insuring you know million dollar aircraft so a you know a thousand dollar uav is literally a drop in the ocean to them uh so they won't hit you with too much of an increase but if you want to keep your premium down stay claims free Tell your friends and fellow operators to stay claims free because it's not always just based on you. Uh, you know, it's based mm-hmm. on the aggregate, everybody. Um, and, you know, just shop around, but when you do shop around, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Because, you know, somebody will say to me, I got a quote for the same coverage for half the price. And I'm like, no, you didn't, because it's not the same at all. There's, right. there's a lot of there's a lot of snake oil salesmen out of there. Out there, there's a lot of people, you know, just trying to make a buck, selling subpar cover. So just be vigilant. Because saving money, you know, you still want your insurance to cover you in the event of. Saving. I I think that brings up a good point where uh, you sometimes you have to ask yourself. If you have an accident and you break some props or you break a, you break your gimbal, let's say, or something happens that's kind of minor damage to your drone, at what point do you think people should actually file a claim? Because you said, you know, one thing to really lower your risk is obviously lower the amount of claims that you file. So do you have some sort of formula or some sort of advice that you could give us for when is the right time to file a claim? Yeah, that's the thing. You know, if you're one of my insureds, you can call me, tell me what happened, or send me an email in your case. Let me know what happened, you know, and we can determine, you know, if it's a good idea to make the claim. Because with hull coverage, it's, you know, there's a deductible associated with it, which is typical, typically 5% of the insured value of the aircraft. You know, so it's it just, you know, how big of a hit do you want to take, uh, you know, is, is really what the bottom line is, you know. Can you afford to replace, you know, $100 damage or, you know, is the thing total? 
you know, is really where you want to look at. And do you want to go through the claims process, which is actually relatively easy, but do you want to go through the process for, you know, something that costs $100? So how, you know, how long is that claims process? I had one settled in three days, actually. Uh, concluded yesterday. It was started on the 15th, concluded on the 18th. Wow. Well, that's pretty quick. That is pretty quick. Yep, and they, and they wired the money to them. It was all done by phone and email. Wow. Just signing a couple uh, forms, uh, sending in a couple documents, and that's it. Hmm. Very interesting. So something else I wanted to clarify, and I, I'm, I know the answer to this, but um, basically the insurance that you and your office offers is specifically on the drones, right? And what I mean by that is it's there's not any business insurance, so someone would have to get that somewhere else. Exactly, exactly. So a traditional insurance broker will cover you on you know, the business end of it. I, we cover aviation. We're aviation only. We can't do your auto. We can't do your life. We can't do your home. Only aviation. So yes, yeah, so it would probably be a good idea to, to get a GL policy that covers you for slips, trips, and falls at your office or something. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, get an aviation policy specifically for the operation of your UAS. All right. Well, I guess the way I would interpret that is a very strong commitment to the aviation insurance world. <laughs> because, I mean, you would have the, op you have the opportunity to go offer those other insurance products as well. You've chosen not to. Exactly. Exactly. We don't, we don't want to mess with it. You know, we have our expert niche and we do very well with it. And there's, you know, and we love it. It's interesting to talk to people about things, you know, that they're passionate about. Yeah. So, you know, I talk to guys about their airplanes and guys about their, you know, UAVs. I'm not talking to them about, you know, ensuring their shed that they just built or something like that. <laughs> Which is very important as well, I'm sure, to some folks. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't have any more questions, Paul. Do you have anything else that's coming to mind that, or anything else that you want to say, Joe, to wrap things up? I don't know. I think, you know, this was, uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. And uh, if you want me back any other time, I'd be uh, glad to do it. And uh, if any of your, you know, uh, viewers have any questions on insurance, just send them my way. I'm always around and willing to talk. Definitely, guys. And we will have that link for you in the show notes. So if you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher, that link will be in the show notes. And we'll also be posting it in the Drone You community. So if you are looking to get a quote from Joe and you want that specialized service and that shiny smile, he'll be able to help you out. Yeah, I do want to make one quick clarification point on the best place to find the show notes, and that is on our website, going to the podcast page and then extending or expanding that particular podcast's information. So you're going to see all the different podcasts there, expand that podcast, and you'll see the show notes there, which will have all the information that we've talked about with Joe today. Definitely. I think that's good stuff. Joe, thank you again for coming on the show. Hey, thank you. Awesome. Well, guys, I think that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to AskDroneU.com and upload your question because chances are, if you're thinking about it, someone else is too. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.